I have a three-way circuit in my hallway here that controls that light. There's a switch down that end of the hall by the bedroom, and then there's a switch over here, as if you're walking down this end of the hall. Now, very common situation, but I want to make it automated. I want to get rid of these manual switches. And to do that, I'm going to use a Casa three-way kit. And uh, this is a smart switch that is going to be on one end and it has a remote switch on the other, but they both act the same way. Now, why would I want a smart switch in a three-way circuit like this? Well, especially in a hallway, a couple of things. Number one, you might want to automate your hallway light so that when you're on vacation, you can have it go on and off. And a hallway light is really good because it casts a little bit of light in every bedroom and it's very hard for somebody to know if someone's home or not. So that's a really good automation. Another one is I have it integrated with Home Assistant and I use um, my ring alarm. So if the alarm goes off, I have all the lights go on in the house. So this is one of them in the hallway. I want that automated as well. And I also have it integrated with my smoke alarms so that if a uh, fire goes, you know, smoke alarm goes off in the middle of the night, all the lights will go on as well. So that's why I want an automated switch here. So I figured I would show you guys how I'm going to do this. The first thing I'm going to do is actually open up the switches and see what kind of wiring I'm dealing with. Now while I'm opening this up, you can see this is a double switch here and I already have a CASA switch over here. Now I choose CASA switches because I really think they're the best overall value and they're uh, really easy to use and they work with Home Assistant very well so you can do what's known as local control. All right, using my non-contact voltage tester, I can make sure of what kind of wiring I'm dealing with. So this is a typical three-way switch. I've got the black wire going to the black screw here is the one that's always hot. So that's considered the line. And the other two wires, there's a black wire and a red wire, those are travelers that go to the other switch down the hall. And you can tell, depending upon the orientation of this switch, which of these wires is hot. Okay, so that's good. And now I'm going to go and open up the other one. Okay, with this switch pulled out, you can see I have three wires connected to it, plus the ground. And there's a black wire on the black screw. And the, there's a black and a red wire on the brass screws. Now, what I can tell from this, I'm going to use my non-contact voltage tester. And this one here with the black screw is off. And when I flip the switch, it goes on. And that also corresponds to the light. When the light is on, that's when this wire is hot. So I know this wire goes to that light. This is called the load. All right, so this is a perfect setup. There's also, you can, it's hard to see them, but inside there you can see the two white wires are connected together. Those are the neutrals. And here we've got ground wires. Those are all under a wire nut too. So this is the perfect scenario for, for uh, putting in these switches. Now this kit here is the HS210 kit, and what it has is two identical switches in here. Now this switch has two wires. One is the green for ground, the white wire is the neutral, and there's a black screw, which is either for line or load. You can see that it says that there. And then there's the other two screws. These are, they look a little silver, brass, I don't know, but these are travelers. The black screw on here is the same as the black screw on the other switches. So I'm just gonna take that wire from those and put them on here. All right, first thing we need to do is turn off the power and that is on this guest bedroom and bath circuit. Okay, the light is dead, but I'll also use my tester just to make sure that there are no live wires anywhere in here. Good. Now I can take the switch out. They give you two sets of labels in the box. And you know what? It's not a bad idea just to make sure you don't confuse them when you take them off. So the first thing that I'm going to do is put down here. I know this is the line and I've got basically two wires on the same screw. The other two are on brass screws. Those are going to be travelers. So I'm going to take the traveler labels and put them on those. They also have a label for the ground, but you know, I, I don't need to label the ground. I know that the bare copper is ground. I like to connect the ground first. 
Just put that under a wire nut, make sure it's good and tight. And then I need to connect the neutrals. So that means I have to pull out the neutral wires, which are in the back here. And you can see I've been here before. <laughs> That's why there's a Wago connector here. So all I have to do is put this white wire under that Wago connector with the others. And I say that because I've never seen any, anywhere in this house, nobody's ever used Wagos. They didn't exist when this house was built. So that's good. Now I've got those, and now I just need to work on the, uh, the hot wires. So remember, my travelers are going on these screws down the bottom, and the line is going to go on the black screw on the side. And these are back wire devices, which means you can put two wires on each screw. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you only have one, you can put it in any one of the holes, either the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter. So this is my line. And this is the line that goes to the switch next door. Okay, the two lines are connected. And now I need my two travelers. And it doesn't matter which one goes where. All right, now it's time to turn the power back on and give it a test. All right, I'm gonna save you a little bit of money here because you really only need one of these switches. You don't need to buy the kit with two switches in it. And what I did is I connected everything the way I said. So the line is connected to the black screw and the two travelers are on the brass screws. All right, and it's blinking here because I haven't set it up, but it works. You can see by the light, it works and if I come over here, now I didn't change out this switch. It works over here too. So you don't really need to use two of these switches. So that's great. Now I'm just gonna turn off the power again and push them in and get them all set up. All right, I put the switches back in here and I put the power back on and you can see this is blinking green and orange, which means it's ready to be set up. Now I'm in my CASA app here, and the first thing I'm going to do is click the plus sign and say I want to add a new device. And this is a smart switch, and it is a smart three-way switch. Now it's asking me, have I installed it already? I'm going to say yes. And it is blinking orange and green. And now I need to look for my TP-Link Wi-Fi. So I switch over to Wi-Fi, I find the TP-Link one. And then it says I'm connected, I go back here. And it's gonna ask me which network do I want? Well, I've previously used my IoT network, so I always use that one for all of my smart switches. And you can see this is gonna, the lights are gonna change on here a little bit. And I'm gonna call this the hall light. How many switches? Now, I used only one switch here, so that's all I'm gonna say. All right, configured my smart switches and they're ready to use. So what I have here is if I go to, where's my, there it is, hall light. Now I know when my hall light is on and when it's off. Now it's very hard to see during the day, but you got a very small little light here, a circle light. And that's typical for CASA switches. When you click it to turn them on, the light goes out. So that's good because you can find the switch in the dark. So now I've got my three-way circuit controls that light with the same switch down there and with my new smart switch up here. But because it's a smart switch, I can also control it from an app. And that means I can add it to any kind of automations and whatever else I want to do with it. So I'll put links to these down in the video description below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Hey there, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon to be the first to know when new videos are posted. 
Look for Handy Dad TV on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and visit the website handydad.tv for more great ideas and information. 